Megan, you've said something about Christian services uh, in the chapel. I wonder what kind of provision is made for people of non-Christian faiths. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm chaplain for people of all faiths and none. Um, so I do try to be deeply sensitive to that. Of course, I'm not a specialist, but I know people who are. Mm. Uh, we've got a very good chaplains network across the university. Mm. Um, so if there's a particular um, pastoral case which involves the support of a Hindu chaplain, for instance, um, we can have a three-way meeting or I can hook them up. Mm. Um, and likewise, you know, if, um, if the Jewish chaplain comes across someone who, you know, might benefit from um, a bit more attention in college, then equally uh, he can hook us up. So it's a sort of two-way thing. It's great to have lovely colleagues yeah. from, from other faiths. Um, we, uh, we have a range of uh, meditation sessions. Um, so uh, kind of trying to connect up spirituality and um, holistic well-being. Mm -hmm. So uh, that might be Sufi or Buddhist or uh, mindfulness as well, because um, although mindfulness is a secular sort of um, meditation practice, as it were, I think, you know, it does share quite a lot in common. So um, all these things, I think, are on a, uh, or an, on a spectrum. Um, and, uh, and I Can you say a little bit more about mindfulness, uh, what exactly that, that means or what that entails? It's a sort of meditational practice that's been um, taken from uh, a Christian and Buddhist kind of combination, um, largely the sort of practice of Buddhist monks, um, but with all the religion taken out of it effectively. So it's all about being kind of present in, um, in the particular moment. Uh, I mean, I get specialists in uh, to, to run the courses. Okay. Um, and, uh, and it's about being sort of thoughtful about um, experiences um, that we might be having right now, um, which helps obviously in terms of anxiety um, or, you know, self-awareness, um, that kind of okay. stuff. Do you find students responding to that? Are students interested in practicing? Well, the, the reason I put on the meditation um, series is that I, I did a little chapel survey uh, about a year ago, um, and I asked people, you know, all sorts of questions from, do you know where chapel is? Um, to, do you know what goes on in chapel? Um, and what would you like to go on um, through chaplaincy? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that, it, a significant number of people said was um, meditation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that people like to know it's going on. They like to know that there's an opportunity for them to come and learn or experience. Um, sometimes they might just be curious. You know, how does a how does a Buddhist meditate? You know, mm -hmm. um, or whatever it might be. Um, so, the other thing is I'm I'm used to in Oxford is that. Uh, there are so many opportunities going on that one can't expect every event that one organises mm. to be packed to the rafters. Um, but I think sometimes what's important is that these things are just happening and that there are opportunities mm. and that there's a sort of discourse of um, other opportunities being available. So we also have um, other interfaiths at interfaith events like um, Chaplain's Colloquia, um, mm. sort of informal uh, conversation uh, over some kind of refreshments, normally which follows perhaps a 30 to 40 minute, slightly more formal kind of panel discussion on something like, you know, science and religion, or we're, we're having one next term on intelligence. So we've got um, our principal speaking about artificial intelligence. Um, we've got other fellows from the college um, speaking about extraterrestrial intelligence and human intelligence. Um, and then uh, we'll have someone else from the theology faculty talking about divine intelligence mm. from a patristics um, point of view. Uh, so th that will be fascinating. But that's the kind of flavor. Um, last, last term we had one about ecology, faithful ecologies mm. and different faith responses mm. to climate change. Mm. Um, What's the value of that? Because that, that's not <coughs> going to be an experience that a lot of people have in mm. kind of your local parish, that kind of opportunity yeah. to have an interfaith, multi-religious dialogue. What's the value of that, do you think? What does it accomplish that, that just uh, can't be accomplished through a dialogue within one of those particular faiths, do you think? I mean, I think it's always important for us to meet the other and to be um, ready to be, uh, to have our horizons expanded, um, ready to be surprised by God. Um, God is bigger than just a God that we keep in our pocket, you know. Um, and so how can I think that I would understand all about God? Um, is there not something that we can always learn from other people? 
um, and, um, and their experiences, whether or not they view them as religious experiences as well. Um, so to some extent, it's about terminology. Um, sometimes people will say X, Y, or Z as a religious experience. Sometimes people might, might describe what someone else might call a religious experience, but in completely secular terms, you know. Um, so it's about conversation um, and valuing other people and realising that there is something special about everyone um, and trying to understand what it is that makes them unique and what they can help us to learn about them and our world and possibly even ourselves.